the biblical truth of our hymns are up to 64 of them. Today, there is Power in the Blood by Lewis Ellington Jones. And let me read what I got here from the internet. This is from hintime.com. Uh, he's a classmate, classmate of evangelist Billy Sunday. Jones attended a Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, Illinois. After graduation, he worked for a Young Man's Christian Association in Davenport, Iowa, Fort Worth, Texas, and Santa Barbara, California. And they give a thing here about a grave that's marked in Alabama, but that seems to be an error. This seems to be a letter written by uh, Jones. In regard to writing of my songs, would say that a great many came from the sentences in my pastor's sermons. Since I began this work, I have always been listening for some such inspiration. I remember that Power in the Blood was written during a camp meeting in Mountain Lake Park, Maryland. My life, was, my life has been uneventful. I was born in Illinois, moved my parents to Iowa, where I lived on a farm until I was 21. Then I went into business for a while. Evidently, I entered a YMCA to work, attended training school in Chicago. Billy Sunday graduated from the same class. I was a YMC work for 36 years. I retired five years ago and am now living in California. Where all of the bad weather is unusual. So. <coughs> excuse me. Would you be free from your burning of sin? There is power in the blood. Not alcohol. Not over-the-counter drugs. Not prescription drugs. Not even illegal drugs. Not even religion. You want that burden of sin away? You want it clean? You want it forgotten by God? You've got to come to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing else is going to cleanse it. And when the devil comes up after you receive Christ and after you confess it, for if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And the devil comes up comes up to me with some minds and say, devil, it's under the blood. That's it. And some sins you're going to remember. But we ought not. It's under the blood of God forgiven. And if God's forgotten. I written my son about a, a thing that he's going to say, listen, I can forgive you. But it's hard to forget. Yeah, is there anything that God can't do? Yeah, God cannot remember the sins that are under the blood. There's power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Victory of what we are and who we are. And let me quote the scripture, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The victory is in the blood of Jesus, not the water of salt water, not the water of fresh water and baptism. It's not in a death cookie of Catholicism. It's not in a religion. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that Acts 20:28 20, says that that's God's blood. And remark to the Jehovah Witnesses who think that God is not Jesus. Acts 20.28 20, says that the church, the people, are purchased by the blood of God. Redeemed. And that blood that flowed for us is Jesus. And it has to be God. Scripture with Scripture. There's wonderful power in the blood. We'll pick up the refrain afterwards as we do. So what is it about? It's about the blood. Jesus Christ could have lived 33 and a half years. And he could have gone out on the Mount of Olives and he could have laid his head after praying to God and he could have died. No, he couldn't die because he's God. 
and the Bible proclaims to us according to the scriptures that he suffered and died according to the scriptures. And the death of Jesus Christ is by blood, is by whipping, is by being nailed, is by this suffocating in his own body fluids upon that cross. It has to be the blood. The fact is, it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve when they said God shed an animal, probably a lamb, most likely, blood to cover their nakedness. It's always the blood. God didn't cover him with water. God said an animal had to be slain, an innocent animal slain for the man and woman that said, as the Lamb of God, which was slain innocently for our sins. Would you be free from your passion and pride? Your passion, what you love, what you desire, what your lusts are, your pride, how great I am. Now, I'm amazed with myself, a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, saved since 1987, how much this flesh rises up and says, me, 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 me. I say, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. He goes, me, 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 me. You know? You can sit in the emergency room of a hospital and have the whole emergency room filled with patients. And you're the one has got to go see the doctor right away. You're the one is important. I've sat in the emergency room and I wasn't even the patient. I'm sitting there, oh, look at me. And my No, it's not about me. Pride is never of God. That is never an attribute of God. God has no pride. Pride is a sin. Look at me. Me, myself, and I. Look at my accomplishments. Look what I've done. Look who I am. Look, 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 look at me. You want to get over that? Put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power in the blood. Your pride, your I am, needs to be put under the blood. I am proud, I am pride, needs to be put under the blood of Jesus Christ. Because as a Christian, you will stand for your pride as wood, hay, or stubble, and burn up, you'll get no reward. I'm proud to be. No, that's a sin. I have great pride. That's a sin. It needs to be. I am proud of. No, that's a sin. And it needs to be under the blood of Jesus. Pride and proud. I am proud. I have pride. You are sinning against God. You need and must confess that sin under the blood of Jesus Christ. Power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's time. There's no other place that has the same cleansing blood of Jesus. It's not at Mecca. It's not in Italy. It's not in Utah. It's not in New York. It ain't in America. It ain't in Poland. It ain't in Africa. It ain't in the Asian. And you guys are mad because I'm saying ain't. There's only one place where you can go to God's blood that was shed for man in his sins. And that's upon Calvary's cross. Outside the gates of Jerusalem. Golgotha. The place of the skull. But you see my salvation. Was, uh, in this little church in Alabama. is what That's not your salvation. That's not where God suffered and died. God nowhere ever put his life down in America. He did not suffer and die in a little church building. There was no building where Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture. There was no river. There was no lake. There was no body of water for it to be cleansed by baptism at Calvary. It's death and blood upon Calvary. There's wonderful power in the blood. Not membership. Not baptism. Not in your works. But the blood of Jesus Christ, Acts 20, 28, God's blood. Jesus is God. Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? Yea, your sins be as scarlet, they shall be whiter, they shall be white as snow. Come now, let us reason together, says God. Isaiah 1, 18. You want to be clean white? It ain't by bleach. It ain't by a detergent. It ain't by a sinful man. It's by the sinless man, Christ Jesus. Cleansing comes through, there's power in the blood. 
They said, fine linen, what, the white of the fine linen is the righteousness of the saint. What is the righteousness of the saints? The blood of Jesus Christ. We're not going to put in a white uh, uh, robe of righteousness by what I've done. I'm not righteous because I go out and witness to people. That's not my righteousness. That's God's righteousness. That's what God did. When I witness about the, the gospel, that's God's gospel, not my gospel. And because I'm nice and I do give money, or I do help someone, or I do do that, or I do 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 this, or I do 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 that, or do 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 this, that do 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 that. It's not what I have done. It's what Christ has done. My love for lost souls is because Christ's love for me. I love him because he first loved me. There are people out there who are not saved. They give a flying flip about other lost people. There are people out there who will give money who are lost to somebody or something because it makes them feel good. Makes them feel important. And the Christian does it because, you know what? Look what the Lord gives me. What, what more can I return back to him? Because I love him because he first loved me. There is power in the blood. What can make you white as snow? You know, the cleanest thing is snow until man touches it. I've been in New England, and I know the, sun, the, the snow comes down, and I've been places where that snow has come down, and there's been no animal, no man. You look at that, it's like that's, it, it, when the sun comes up, it crystals, and it's beautiful. And it gets defiled by man in snow plows, and man walking through it, and animals doing their nature in it. That defiles. Man defiles the pureness of the snow by him trampling. Our sins defile the whiteness that we get from the blood of Jesus Christ. And we need, if we confess our sins again, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. We muddy the snow of God by sinning. And we need the blood of Jesus Christ again. I met one man in my life, oh, I've never sinned. You've sinned just by opening up your big mouth. James. James is a hell called Jesus too. It's as quiet as hell. Man, you've never sinned in anything, anything. Have you ever said something you wish you could take back? Sin. Have you said something that you do not want to take back and ought not to have been said? Sin. What can make you whiter than snow? God. God's blood. Jesus Christ suffering and dying upon the cross of Calvary. Power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in this life-giving flow. There is wonderful power in the blood. Now I've already said, you know, I'm going to just, I'm going to take, I was saved 1987. Every sin from 1968 September 6th, the day I was born, to uh, uh, April 21st, 1987. All those sins are washed in the blood. They're gone. So if I pick up a sin, and let's see, let, let me pick up a, a, a simple sin. I've broken my mom's heart many times. I disobeyed my parents. The devil comes up to me and says, huh? You see how you treated your mother? I know that's wrong. But when was that, devil? Well, I was, you know, you were a child. It's under the blood of God. God is for God. Lord God, if I'd never confess that sin, I know I was saved April 21st, but if I should confess that sin right now, I confess it, and if, I, if I've sinned against the blood that you've forgotten, forgive me, Lord. But devil, that sin is under the blood, and God be like, I don't know what you're talking about as far as the east from the west. What sins are you talking about? The ones that the devil will bring up. You know what I mean? Sin stains are lost. Isn't it funny when we got saved, our sins got lost? According to, the, according to this passage in this hymn, when I got saved, my sins got lost. When you got saved, your sins got lost. And God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. God says, go out and preach the gospel to lost people. Get them. 
Get them. Go out there. Go in the hedges. Go in the highways. Go get them. The devil goes out and tries to dig up the sins that God has forgotten and bring them to be. And that's wrong. Totally wrong. So the sins that I put under the blood of Jesus Christ before I was saved and after I was saved, April 21st, 1987, and then after I've been saved, when I confess my sins to God and, and, and God's cleansed me, they're gone. And I need not to remember them, though I do. I need not to remember because God won't remember them. Would you do service to Jesus, your king? There is power in the blood. You know I have problems with that king because Jesus is not my king. Jesus is the king to the nation of Israel, not to the church. Now, when we have a reign in the millennium and he's the king of kings, all right, then he becomes the Christian's king and only to a limited few who get that right of reign because that does not come unless you serve. So would you do service to Jesus your king? This is darkly right. And I'm not going to hit this because if you darkly serve the Lord and do right, Paul speaks about an inheritance ruling that we can get to, to, by serving God. So when Jesus Christ is king of the Jews in Jerusalem in the millennium, and Revelation 1 says he has made us to be kings, and he is the king of kings, well, the capital K, who's that? That's Jesus. The small K, who's that? That's the Christian. That's when Jesus becomes our king. But he's our he is our groom. He is our savior. He is the, the chief shepherd. He is the shepherd. Only in the millennium does he become our king. There is power in the blood. Service. Witnessing, praying, reading, helping, exhorting, rebuking, in season, out of season, helping Christians grow, help the lost of Christ. That's the service, supporting your church, supporting your pastor, helping your church pay for the utility, providing seed to the sowers. And for that, we get, get you a chance of wood, hay, or stubble, and a right to the millennial inheritance. So I'm not going to hit that one as you thought I would. Because in the millennium, he will be our king. As we will be king. Under the king. There's power, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? Well, you see... I live for Jesus, really. Sunday mornings, when I go to church. Is that Sunday school? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't get up that early. I go to service. Sunday night? No. That's, that's my lodge meeting. Midweek service, uh, Wednesday, or what, what? That's my children's baseball. You gotta be kidding. Do you go out with the church or have any kind of evangelistic where you're telling people, well, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Come on, I mean, really? You think I'm going to have people rank on me and, and, and yell at me and tell me I'm a holy roller, but if I witness Jesus? I, I give God my Sunday morning, that's enough. Give him the service. But daily, are you reading your Bible every day? Oh, yeah, yeah, I read my Psalms. Doesn't the Bible say, study to show thyself for foods unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, right and divine? You know, okay, I read my Bible. Oh, read my three chapters, I'm done. But doesn't the Bible say, study? Doesn't it say, study? You don't just read three chapters. Okay, I'm done for the year. Did you study? Have you prayed for somebody other than yourself? I, uh, my wife is in the hospital. As far as I know right now, there are two other Christians in my church are in the hospital. 
I am praying for them more than I'm praying for my wife. There are people right now, one, I'm not sure, they're homesick. I'm praying for them. I've got my prayer book here. And when I go through my prayer book, you know, I say, Lord, I don't know if that person's still living. Now, Lord God, we don't pray for the dead people. I, Lord God, if he's dead, I, I, show me so I don't pray for him no more. Lord, I don't know what happened to that one. I don't know what happened to that family. And I still pray for them. You know what I have in my prayer book? Lord God, help me to pray for those names I've forgotten. Lord, there's in my prayer book all the gospel tracts I got out because I've forgotten all the gospel tracts and all the places they've been. We came down from Connecticut to Florida and we put gospel tracts in bathroom all over the place. I've forgotten most of those. And Lord, I pray for not only the gospel tracts I got out, how great I am, but Lord, I pray for all the gospel tracts that got out, that have been out. I pray, Lord God, for the Fellowship Track League that they get tracts all over the world by the cartons. Lord, there are people on my Facebook, they go out there and witness. I got a husband and wife right now in India. Lord God, I pray for India and I pray for them too for getting out the gospel. I faithfully tend my church. I support my pastor by being there. Well, what could that do? I know personally, when I was in the, in the jail ministry, I prepared a great message. I thought it was great. And I've gone to jail ministry. I sat there and the jail was in lockdown. No one was there. I've had, I've had, had meetings where there's been nobody. That doesn't make you feel good. Even though, you know, nobody could come out, and I know if they could come out, they come out, but there was nobody there. I didn't feel too well. I've gone to jail ministries, been in the in the, the reception, the waiting room, whatever you want to call it. They come up to you, sir, they're in lockdown. We, you won't have service tonight. Oh. I don't want my pastor who I love and loves my family. I don't want him to stand up in that pulpit and look out there and just hear crickets. Now, I'm not one of those people, oh, every time the doors are open, I'm going to be there. Listen, if I'm sick and I get somebody else sick, I'm not going to be there. If there's a traffic accident somewhere and, and the road is, I can't be there. Okay? Do you support your pastor by being there? Now, I don't take note notes, but listen, I got my Bible open. My Bible's marked, and he says, hey, you know, this word means that, and I don't have it written down. I'll write it down. If he says this, I say, oh, that's interesting. I'll write that down. And it's funny, my pastor will tell us, you know, underline this, and I've already got it marked somehow. And my mark in my Bible, if it, if it ain't marked, oh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. My pastor says, and the Bible says, don't do this. Do you do it? I mean, he said, you're, the Bible says we're not to do this. Do you do it? Then you're not listening to your pastor in the Bible. You pray for your pastor and his family. Listen, I've sat under pastors that don't care. They're in my prayer book too. I got two pastors in my prayer book that they get right. That's my prayer. They're not right. You sing. There's times when I when I, I'm doing my Bible reading and studying. I'll put the YouTube on and I and I have and I'll put them on my Facebook once in a while. I have instrumental hour, two hours of hymn, hymn music, no words at all. And when I'm doing that, you know what? I'll be singing, and I'm not singing the words of that hymn. I'm singing my own words of my own heart to God. I mean, uh, you take like like the the, the music to uh, as a lamb or no? What is that one? As a deer. As a deer. I, well, I've already told you that one's wrong. But when I hear that music, that beautiful music, and I sing to the Lord, I sing right. You know, someday when you do it like that, you you sing hymns like that. You're doing what a lot of a lot of these hymns are poems. 
And I don't think they ever expected to be put in a hymnal. And what they're writing is they're writing their own personal testimony to God. And listen to instrumental hymns. And let the Lord sing your heart to God. A lot of these hymns, when you look at them and you read them and then you sing them, you don't do them, but the hymn writer did it. And somebody came along and put it to music. There is power. Power. Wonder working power. You got, you got it? Power. Isn't that the Star Wars movies, the power of the force or something like that? One of those movies, you know, the power. Isn't there like a Power Rangers? <laughs> Garbage. There is power in the blood of Jesus. You say, well, how much power is that? Now, I am not talking about myself. I'm, I'm going to give a harsh statement here. A man has, in fact, I know this is true. A man has gone out and killed somebody. I know. This is for a fact. And he's saved. You know what the power is? That murder will never be charged to him again. And I'm not going to give you the detail. I know I, I found out the harsh way about the details of that man. But that man's saved. He's a wisecracker, and he thinks he know, but he's saved under the blood. Adultery, heinous crime. Job says it should be charged by the judges. That man over there committed adultery. If it's under the blood, the power is, God says, what adultery? I don't see no adultery. Don't you see that guy got married to that woman and, and, left, and left her husband? And, and, and It's under the blood. I see a marriage that's serving me and loving me, and I see two that pray to me and confess their sins. I don't know what sin you're talking about. Woman who sells herself out for sex. Ooh, that's a gross wicked. And she comes to Jesus and gets right. And confesses those sins. And confesses the, 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 the adultery, the fornication, and the lewdness of, that, of those sexual acts. And she gets saved. And God forgives her. She becomes a Sunday school teacher. And somebody finds out about her past. And they bring it up to the church. And, oh, and brought what up to the church? She sold herself out. She was a whore. She was a prostitute. Let's ask God. God, is she a prostitute? No. But Lord, she... I don't know what you're talking about. It's under the blood. Now, isn't that power? How about when you were five years old and you stole that cookie from your mom? Devil go, hey, you stole cookies from your mom. Yeah, I did. God, I don't know what, what, what you're talking about. You confessed that sin. You've gotten saved from that sin. I don't know what you're talking about. There's power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb, capital L. The Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. How's that power? Type of the, the Passover Lamb. Abraham told Isaac, said, Isaac, yeah, I know what you're saying, son. He said, God, shall, God will provide himself a lamb. God will provide himself, Jehovah Witness. God will give himself. And that land that God gave him himself was Jesus Christ, who shed God's blood, Acts 20, 28. I guarantee this hymn is not sung in the Jehovah Witness, whatever they call it. Are you washed in the blood of lamb or are you washed in water? There's a big difference. Are you washed in the blood of land or are you a member of a church? There's a big difference. Are you washed in the blood of the land that takes away the sin of the world or are you a good person? There's a difference. Are you washed in the blood of the land or do you have royal blood? There's a big difference. There is power, power. One day working power, 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 power. In case you forgot it, in the precious blood of the lamb. Stolly, you going to heaven? Yes, I am. You really going to heaven? Yes, I am. How you get to heaven? The blood of the lamb. You're going to be all eternity in heaven? Oh, yes, I will. How? By the blood of the Lamb. But 
you, re you, you remember the time that you did that? Yeah, I did that. What about that? It's in the power of the blood of the Lamb. What are you telling me? God's forgotten. God has cleansed me, and he has washed me, and he's forgotten. He don't forget me. He forgets the sins that are under the blood. Remember, when I got saved, my sins got lost. I like that. 